Good evening. A very very warm welcome to this session. How are you all? How is everyone doing today? Great. So yes, this is our first session together. You're done with the bio chapter, and now it's time to master another chapter. Yes. Hi, Sneha. Good evening. Good evening, all of you. Sneha, Praveen, Sneha, Pratiksha, Faria, Abhishek. Good evening, guys. So yes, we will be mastering a chemistry chapter today. Awesome. Swati, Sunil, Neha, Ranjana, Har Simran, Sasmita, Payal, which was so good to meet all of you. Sonali, Neha, Prakash, Netra, Payal, Arikanti. How are you all doing? Fine. Good to know that. I'm doing really well. Thank you, guys. Gun Gun, Divyan, Faria. How many of you like chemistry? Let's see. This is our first chemistry session together, right? How do you find this subject? Let me see. Do you like science? Do you like chemistry or not? Hey, Pratiksha, very nice. Vansh, Abhirami. A lot of you like chemistry. Okay, Prakash is saying, "Ma'am, my favorite subject is." Awesome. Praveen is also saying, "I like chemistry." Aro, he also likes it. Most of you like science. Great. Good to see so many thumbs up in the comment section that you all like chemistry. High five, actually. Really well, really well. I see a lot of you have joined in. I'm sure you know the drill. फटाफट से बता दो इफ यू कैन हियर मी प्रॉपरली सी मी प्रॉपरली इफ द पीपीडी इज वर्किंग फाइन आई विल प्रॉब्ली नीड अ लिटिल हेल्प फ्रॉम द स्टूडियो मॉडरेटर आई थिंक सम डबल वॉइस इज कमिंग इफ दैट कैन बी फिक्स्ड लेट्स फिक्स दिस डबल नॉइस दैट्स कमिंग मीनवाइल यू ऑल कैन लेट मी नो इफ आई एम परफेक्टली ऑडिबल एंड विजिबल और नॉट Hey Parnika, it's not reaching you; it's reaching me. Perfectly clear, audible. All right, there is some double noise in the studio. Can that be fixed, please? Great. Good to know that. I'm just waiting. for this double noise that's coming from my end to get fixed and then we'll get started and today it's going to be a very very special class meanwhile what i want you to do is tell me one thing do you know the working of engines may it be a car engine or a rocket engine i see a lot of you write are writing yes ma'am we know about this So what's the working? What process is taking place when I talk about engines? Let's see if you can figure this out. I think somewhere the hint is there on the screen itself. Ayush says combustion. Yes. Absolutely right. So combustion is basically taking place. Correct, guys. I I see a lot of you writing this. I'll request Harish to come here once. Harish, can you fix this double noise, please? Correct. You guys are absolutely right. Yes. I can see that. You know it. Correct. Correct. Yes. So let's explore more about combustion and flame today. 
If you're all set for this, give me loads of thumbs up. Loads and loads of thumbs up that yes, we are all set to get started, to master this chapter in one go, complete chapter. Harish, can you help me with this please? Awesome, I see all of you are giving loads and loads of thumbs up, so let's get started. So, in this chapter we will be covering combustion and flame, that's the chapter, right? And we've divided this chapter in sub parts over here, yes? So, we'll be talking about combustion, flame and fuel. We'll be talking about all these three, right? Now, we'll be beginning with combustion. Let's understand what exactly is combustion. So, Let's get started. Can we fix the noise? Yeah. All right, let's get started with combustion. So, it's basically a chemical process in which a substance is reacting with oxygen, right? And it's giving off a lot of heat and light and this process is known as combustion. Really simple, right? We keep hearing this reaction but now let's understand what is basically happening over here. So, it's a process in which, it's a chemical process in which there is a substance, the substance is reacting with oxygen and a lot of heat and light are being produced. So, when we talk about combustion, there is so much more to explore about this. We will be talking about combustible and non-combustible substances, we will be talking about conditions required for combustion, types of combustion and of course, how can we control the process, how can we stop combustion. So, let's get started with the first one that is combustible and non-combustible substances. Again, the name is self-explanatory over here. The substances which can undergo combustion are basically combustible substances. For example, you've got matchsticks, paper, coal, petrol, all these are substances which are combustible. They can catch fire. What else can catch fire easily? Let's see. Hydrogen, Prakash is saying oil, yes kerosene oil, some fabrics, correct. Yes, they can also catch fire really easily. Now, let me tell you one really interesting fact. There are more than 140 combustible substances. So, I have named few substances over here. I have named say 4 are written over here, 4 we discussed verbally. Just imagine there are more than 140 combustible substances. Think about this, how many of them are you aware of? Yes, absolutely. Find out, find out more substances. Great. Yes, Abhirami. So, there is a substance. It's going, it's undergoing a change, right? Yes, the substance is reacting with oxygen and it's giving off a lot of light and heat. Correct. Yes. So, there are so many substances which are combustible. I want you to figure out as many as possible. I see some of you writing it in the chat box. Great! So, coming to non-combustible, again it's just the opposite, right? So, when we talk about non-combustible substance, they do not undergo combustion. For example, we've got bricks, sand, iron nail, glass and I want you to figure out some more and write it down in the chat box given below. Figure out some more substances which are not undergoing combustion. Yes, correct glass is one of them. Yes, that is the thing. So, we know what combustion is. Now, we know what are combustible substances and what are non-combustible substances. So, we have in a way happily understood this concept. Moving on to the next one, what are the conditions required for combustion? When we talk about combustion, we said that oxygen is really mandatory to be there. You know, it goes without saying that oxygen is necessary. So, yes, it is a necessity for combustion. It is really necessary for combustion to take place. So, there is a substance 
a combustible substance that can catch fire. It reacts with oxygen, producing a lot of heat and light. So, oxygen is really necessary for this process. Now, combustion can further be divided into two types. One is a complete combustion, one is incomplete combustion. Now, this basically depends on the availability of oxygen. If the oxygen supply is unlimited, which means a lot of oxygen is there, in that case, the type of combustion will be complete. But if the supply is limited, if the oxygen supply is limited, in that case, it's going to be incomplete combustion. Alright, let me ask you something. Suppose there is a carbon compound. If complete combustion is taking place, just guess what is going to be the product. Let's see who is going to guess this one. Since it's our first live session together, you people have to make it lively. So, keep interacting with me. Keep posting your answers in the comment section. Rujul says carbon dioxide. Pratiksha is also saying the same. Correct guys, absolutely right. Alright, so if there is a carbon compound, in the presence of unlimited oxygen, carbon dioxide is being produced. What will happen in case of incomplete combustion? Then what is going to be produced? Yes, all of you are right. Gungun, Harshita, Sonali, Sneha. Correct. Arohi. What's going to happen in case of incomplete combustion? What is going to be formed? If carbon dioxide is being formed here, dash will be formed here. Let's see. Pratiksha is the first one to answer. Well done. It's carbon monoxide. So, yes, availability of oxygen also decides what products would be formed. Now, there is another important term that you need to understand that is ignition temperature. I again have a question for you. Suppose you have a single matchstick, right? And I give you two substances. One is a paper and one is a log of wood. With one single matchstick, can you burn a paper? A quick yes or no in the comment section. Can you burn a paper with a single matchstick? Yes, yes, all of you are saying yes, correct, correct, correct. Alright, now I have a single matchstick with me and now I have to burn a log of wood. Can I do that? What about a log of wood? A quick yes or no in the comment section. No, correct. And this is the concept of ignition temperature. So, every substance for every substance, it's going to be different, right? Ignition temperature basically is the lowest temperature at which a substance catches fire. For paper, it's 233 degrees Celsius, wood 310 degrees Celsius, petrol 220 degrees Celsius, candle wax 300 degrees Celsius, which means that if the temperature is say about 250 degrees Celsius, it is above the ignition temperature of paper, that means the paper can catch fire very easily as compared to wood. Yes? Yes, Sonali, we need more matchstick in that case. So, ignition temperature basically is the lowest temperature, right? Lowest temperature at which a substance can catch fire. If the available temperature is above the ignition temperature, then of course, what is going to happen? The substance will catch fire. If the available temperature is below the ignition temperature, below the minimum temperature required for burning, then of course, burning would not take place. Harshita is saying, yes ma'am, with loads of thumbs up. So, the concept of ignition temperature is also perfectly clear. Now, let's understand what are inflammable substances. And one thing I would want to pinpoint over here. Flammable is, you know what flammable substances are. Inflammable, they are also the same. They are not the opposite, okay. Substances which have very low ignition temperature, they are basically inflammable substances and they can catch fire very, very easily with a flame. For example, you've got petrol, LPG. What's the full form of LPG, guys? What is LPG? Quickly tell me. And of course, we've got hydrogen. I hope you all know the full form of LPG. Let's see who's going to answer it first. I know you all know, but I want to see who's going to answer this one first. Ujwal is the first one to answer. Liquid petroleum gas. And then I have Sneha mentioning it. Agash, Rujul, Pratiksha, Harsimran, Pannika, Prakash, Sonali, Amir, all of you are saying. 
great so these the list is given to you right inflammable substances they have very very low ignition temperature right because of which they can catch fire very easily so inflammable is not the opposite of flammable this is what you want to this is what i want to highlight over here correct sonali ne cng ki bhi likh di all right awesome now now that you know the concept of ignition temperature let's learn this concept in some interesting manner right let's learn it together in a very innovative manner are you all ready if yes give me loads and loads of thumbs up over here if you're all set for this then we'll move on to the other screen for this let's see who all are basically ready for this quickly i want loads of thumbs up loads of smileys in the comment section so if you will write start in the chat box that's when i will click on the start button so quickly write start in the comment section we'll talk about water as well don't worry ujwal ne to likh diya start and then i see a lot of you writing about start that means we all are set now here you have to keep interacting with me because whatever you will tell me to do is what i'm going to do over here great awesome so let's get started tap on the options what and observe the, the temperature at which we the following materials catch fire you are given four substances right and it's phosphorus cotton wood and coal let's check something about them let's check at what temperature they can catch fire what do you want to check first what do you want to check first is it phosphorus cotton wood coal sabse pehle kise check kare so i'll tap on the option and then we'll observe the temperature at which that particular substance can catch fire i see okay i'll go with the majority of vote okay i see a lot of you voting for coal so let's get started with coal let's check for coal what do you think it's the temperature going to be high or low hi correct guys correct so coal has a very high ignition temperature of 500 degrees celsius if the temperature ignition temperature is so high obviously it will not catch fire very very easily isn't it correct grisha is saying order se chalte hain so now we know for coal the temperature is very high the minimum temperature that is required for coal to burn is extremely high and now we can actually understand why coal is not burning so easily yes all right i think coal was not visible here it's right here now is it visible great so yes coal was there let's see what's the next one now i'm hiding coal we are done with it wood cotton phosphorus what's the next one that you want to check i'll go with the majority let's see a tough competition between cotton and phosphorus cotton all right so let's check cotton now what do you think is it going to be high or low low okay let's see how low then there you go 120 degrees celsius so since cotton has a low ignition temperature 120 degrees celsius is easily achievable right that's the reason it can catch fire easily coal had such a high temperature cotton is not having that high temperature right correct so on the next one let's check out i see a lot of you writing about wood also so there you go let's check for wood what is your guess in case of wood hi hello what do you think it's going to be mix okay hi hi mix ayush says hi prakash says low all right for wood it's 310 degree celsius so since wood is also having very high ignition temperature again it's not going to catch fire very easily and of course your favorite phosphorus now i see a lot of you writing ma'am phosphorus ka bahut jaldi aa jayega and you people are right see how quickly this 30 degree was being reached so that means 30 degree celsius is enough to actually make phosphorus catch fire it has so low ignition temperature and that's the reason it can catch fire very very easily 
Yes? Correct. Absolutely right. Very low. Now that you know the concept of ignition temperature, there is a question for you. You will tell me what to mark. The question says, ignition temperatures of fuels A, B, C and D are 44 degrees Celsius, 53 degrees Celsius, 64 degrees Celsius and 88 degrees Celsius respectively. Which fuel or fuels will burn if temperature is increased to 60 degrees Celsius? And guys, more than one option can be correct. Just have a look over here. They are saying more than one option can be correct. Gun Gun ne pehle answer de diya hai. Pixel guy, Praveen, Akshat, Parnika. All of you are saying ma'am fuel A and B. Should I mark that? Lock kar de? Quickly tell me, if you are very confident about this, let's lock these two fuels then. Fuel A, fuel B, all right, I see all of you are voting for fuel A and fuel B. Let's lock and submit our answer. Give me a thumbs up if you are confident about this one. Prakash ne bhoat saare thumbs up de di hai, to Prakash ki baat maan ke hum submit karte hai. Let's see, yes, well done guys, you people are absolutely right. So, basically, as you can see over here, we know what ignition temperature is. It's the lowest temperature at which a substance can catch fire, right? 60 degrees to temperature hai. Let's go back to the options first. 60 degrees is more than 44 degrees Celsius. Yes, 60 degrees is more than 64, 64 uh, 53 degrees Celsius. It's less than 64, it's less than 88, right? So, A and B K value se zyada hai. 60 degrees is obviously more than the ignition temperature of A and B. That is 44 degree and 53 degree respectively. Yeah, just like that, Kavyansh. So yes, clearly 60 degrees, at, if the temperature is 60 degrees, then of course fuel A and B will start burning. In case of C and D, the value is more than 60, then of course it's not happening in that case. Correct. Yes, yes, absolutely right. Yes, Pixel Guy, you're correct. Let's go back to the main screen now. Now we've understood the ignition temperature. Let's switch back and continue with this. All right. Yes. So now we know about the conditions that are required for combustion. Yes? Great! Now let's get started with the types of combustion. Types se start karte hain. So, we have rapid combustion, spontaneous combustion and explosion. Rapid combustion, I think these names are very self-explanatory. Fuels which can burn rapidly, producing a lot of heat and light. The point to be noted over here is when ignited by an external source, that means in case of a matchstick or a you know LPG burner, what happens? We need an external source. We need some external help. But once this help is there, they burn rapidly. Such type of combustion is your rapid combustion. Now coming to spontaneous one. Well, in case of spontaneous also, the fire can be caught very easily, immediately, right? But without any external source. Just in case of phosphorus or coal dust mines, coal dust in mines. Yes. Great. Yes, absolutely right. So, in case of rapid, you need external source. In case of spontaneous combustion, no external source is required. Yes, you will definitely get the PDF of this. Don't worry. Now, coming to explosion. I think explosion is everyone's favorite. We have seen fireworks, right? Maybe like on New Year's, on a lot of occasions we see this. Fireworks is an example of an explosion. So, what is happening in this case? There is a sudden reaction and there is evolution of heat, light and sound along with a large amount of gas. Correct. Yes, that is explosion. Okay, you people are mentioning when all you have seen that. <laughs> Great. Awesome. Good to know that, guys. Bilkul sahi. That is going to be an explosion. Now coming to the fourth very important topic. Now we know that you know fuel, oxygen, heat, all these are basically required for combustion to take place. Now if we have to stop combustion, 
in a way we can remove any one of these right stop the supply of say the fuel or oxygen or heat control heat in that case what will happen we can actually control combustion we can actually stop combustion yes so let's understand all of this one by one let's start with fuel now over here very basic example something that you do like on a daily basis i'm sure you notice this all around you when the gas stove is switched off what happens it cuts the supply of the fuel now when the supply of the fuel is not there obviously you can control combustion yes how many of you have noticed this this is i think chemistry is very much linked to our day to day life daily basis pe hum ye note karte hain i see a lot of you right yes ma'am we've seen this this is like very basic good all right moving to oxygen now again something that you are already aware of when you see that there is a fire what happens we usually wrap a blanket around the person right why so that we can cut the supply of oxygen now we know that we do this now we know why we do this great yes because we remember we all remember i'm sure that oxygen is very necessary for combustion right so if we can we can actually cut the supply of oxygen then of course we can control combustion so wrap a blanket you'll be able to stop the supply of oxygen what else can be done have you noticed this and this i'm sure is there in your schools as well small buckets are there in that sand is being placed because sand again is very helpful in extinguishing fire right by cutting off the supply of oxygen this happens how many of you have noticed this in your school correct yashvi kis kis ke school mein actually you know uh, corridors ke side pe it's there yes fire extinguisher is also there correct we'll come to that as well so many of you are raising hand yes ma'am we've seen i also had this in my school correct all right next as you people said fire extinguisher ma'am hamare school mein fire extinguisher hai you people are right you people are very observant so fire extinguisher can also cut the supply of air and also brings down the temperature of the fuel let's understand the working of a fire extinguisher how exactly does it work so over here there's a bottle that contains sulfuric acid and there's another container that contains sodium bicarbonate now what happens when the knob is struck the bottle breaks the acid comes out and it reacts with the bicarbonate when it reacts with bicarbonate carbon dioxide gas is produced now have a look again when carbon dioxide is being produced percentage of co2 that is carbon dioxide is going up and of course the percentage of oxygen is going down and that's how you can actually control fire correct you've seen in the chemistry lab awesome so now you know the working also quick quick thumbs up if now if anybody would ask you how exactly is a fire extinguisher working and you people would know it use it in our school yes good awesome guys all right now moving to the next one that is heat very basic water cools the combustible material and brings its temperature below the ignition temperature so if we come below the ignition temperature what's going to happen the minimum temperature for burning is not reached therefore the substance will not undergo combustion yes great but i have a question for you over here we are saying water cools the combustible substance but what i'm thinking is what i want to know from you is do you think ice can catch fire think about this do you think is it possible for ice to catch fire a yes or a no let's see let's see who's voting for or yes and who's saying no can we you know um combine ice with something and make it catch fire yes no no yes yes no no maybe maybe yes no no yes all right a mix of a lot of answers so there is a special compound calcium carbide now read about this compound calcium carbide when it is actually reacting with ice ice is like nothing but h2o right a product is being formed and that product is highly inflammable yes 
so that product catches fire. So read about this, it is a very very interesting topic. Yes, if combined, correct, calcium carbide, good, good to know you are going to read about this, awesome. All right, so we have covered the topic of combustion. Now it's time to know about flame. Interesting part. When we talk about flame, right? You know, we we have this ki flame to banta yoga, but fire may burn with or without flame. Not every fire has a flame. It can be with or without flame, which means. Let's understand in which case it's being produced, in which case it's not produced. Substances which vaporize during burning can produce flame. For example, wax and kerosene. But other substances which do not vaporize during burning, they do not produce a flame. For example, charcoal. Have you ever seen a charcoal burn? Do you see flame coming out of it? Let's see. Something that you must have observed at some point or the other. Has this happened? No, right? But obviously, we all have seen wax, candle wax melt, candle wax burn. There we see a flame. So yes, this is a very, very important point. It depends on the substance, whether the substance can vaporize or not. Now, Let's move on and understand the structure of a flame. So, we've got an activity time. Alright, let's understand this. Let's actually observe a candle. And let's understand this activity. All right, it's all set. Now, what I want to want all of you to do is look at this flame. Can you see this flame? Yes. Can you see this candle burning? I want you to tell me what colors can you see? What zones can you see? I see a lot of you are curious to know this. I'm holding this candle. I want you to notice the color very closely. Yellow, orange, orange, yellow, black, reddish orange, yellow, blue. Yeah, some of you can spot blue color as well. Let me bring it a bit closer. Now, maybe you will be able to see the colors better. Yes? Great! Quickly tell me all the colors, all the zones that you can see. Majority of you are going with orange is yellow, all right, black and blue. Fix kar de answer. Jaldi se batao, fix kar de. Give me a thumbs up if you are ready. Yes ma'am, let's fix this. Great, all right, so these are the various zones. We never actually... You know, so carefully notice the candle ever. Now, looking at this candle, you know, seems like there are so many zones to this. Let's blow this off. And even this seems interesting, right? Great. All right. Now, let's understand this concept. Let's understand what's happening over here. Now that you've told me about the structure, you notice this candle, right? You saw this candle was very much there with different zones. So, there are three main zones. Let's understand the structure of a candle now. When we talk about a candle, you would have noticed that innermost zone was dark. It was like blackish in color, right? Here, what is there? Unburned carbon is there and it's the least hot zone. Temperature is not so much over here, right? Next we have is the middle zone, right? Now this middle zone is luminous in nature. It's a luminous zone. 
here partial combustion takes place right since partial combustion is taking place obviously it is moderately hot so you know the color it's yellowish orange luminous zone middle zone where partial combustion is taking place temperature is more than inner zone over here now how many of you could actually see the next zone that was the outermost zone which is non luminous which was blue in color here complete combustion takes place since complete combustion is taking place obviously it is the hottest zone and temperature here is going to be the maximum yes i see a lot of you writing yes ma'am we saw that awesome correct good to know that so there you go these were the three zones that you yourself notice now i want all of you to perform this experiment at home something that you can easily do right next time when you actually light a candle observe the three colors great yes anukriti will be starting with that chapter really soon don't worry about that see notice will see all kinds of comments are there so you have a luminous zone that is the middle one you have a dark zone that's the innermost and you've got non luminous which is the outermost zone quickly tell me which is the hottest quickly quickly i just discussed this with you let me see how many of you were attentive which is the hottest zone let's see who's going to be the first one to answer outermost swati is the first one to answer correct non luminous zone which is the outermost is going to be the hottest correct guys all right so this was about flame and let's move on to fuel now we all know what fuel is right sources of heat energy that is what the fuel is for example wood charcoal petrol kerosene and there are so many other sources as well so all these substances are known as fuels now there is something which is an ideal fuel what are the properties of ideal fuel ideal fuel is basically a fuel that is economic very easily available it's not harming the environment so no undesirable residues being produced and it has high calorific value this is a new term right calorific value let's understand what this term basically means calorific value it's related to the fuel efficiency so fuel efficiency is basically expressed in terms of its calorific value how do we define this it's the amount of heat energy that is produced on complete combustion of 1 kg of a fuel so how much heat is being produced when 1 kg of a fuel is burned will actually let you know about its calorific value correct so it is expressed as kilojoule per kg remember this guys kilojoule per kg because i'm going to give you numerical really soon correct kilojoule per kg calorific value has a formula which is the amount of heat release see the amount of heat energy right so amount of heat release divided by amount of fuel burned yes so there is a formula to calculate the calorific value for any fuel amount of heat release divided by the amount of fuel burned if this formula is there in your mind now i'll give you a numerical to solve and let's see who's really you know uh, fast in solving that maths kiski achhi hai okay i see a yes ma'am so there you go there is a numerical for you on the screen 5 kg of coal liberates 10000 kJ of heat on combustion find its calorific value 5 kg of a coal liberates 10000 kJ of heat on combustion find its calorific value i am waiting for the fastest finger over here fastest finger first is गुनगुन देन आरती प्रवीण अक्षत ने यूनिट भी लिखा है उज्जवल अभिषेक आयुष देन आई कैन सी अ लॉर्ड ऑफ यूर राइटिंग द आंसर अ लॉर्ड ऑफ यूर पोस्टिंग इट नाउ ग्रेट यस सो वॉट्स द अमाउंट करेक्ट करेक्ट गाइज यस अमाउंट ऑफ हीट हाउ मच टेन थाउजेंड किलो जूल्स यस and we have 5 kg of coal just divide this you will get 2000 kilojoules per kilogram please note only j is in capital k 
and G both are in small. Correct, 2000, yes absolutely right. Give me a smiley face in the comment section if you actually got this answer correct. If the numerical value and the unit both are right, see both would carry marks. Let's see how many smileys am I going to get. A lot of you got this right. A lot of happy faces are there. And this makes me really happy. Alright, moving on to fuel efficiency. Fuel efficiency is done. Moving on to adverse effects of fuel. You know about fuel efficiency now, right? We just calculated calorific value. Moving on to the adverse effects. Now, combustion of carbon fuels like wood, coal, petroleum, they release a lot of unburned carbon, especially if it's incomplete combustion. This is definitely going to cause a lot of diseases. For example, asthma, not so good for our respiratory system, right? So yes, fuel burning is not something that is very much encouraged. Yeah, even if complete combustion is taking place, then also it's going to be harmful. See, if complete combustion is taking place, maybe carbon dioxide is being produced. In that case also, it's a greenhouse gas, right? So it will lead to greenhouse effect that will lead to increase in the earth's temperature, ultimately cause global warming. Again, a big no-no, right? Also, besides oxides of carbon, we also have oxides of sulfur and nitrogen, right? And these toxic gases, they, which are being released due to the combustion of fuel, they can combine with rainwater, making it acidic. Now, the problem with acid rain is that it can affect the marble. Have you heard of this term, marble cancer? So, yes, acid rain can cause marble cancer, it can corrode marble. Plus, it can wash, you know, essential minerals from the soil and it can, you know, affect water bodies also. Aquatic life will get affected. Again, acid rain is not something desirable. Yes, fire, you will definitely get that. Yes, it can harm the monument, corrode the monument, correct. Change the color, absolutely right. Great, so you've understood why the color of Taj Mahal has changed over time, right? Good, so these are the adverse effects of fuel, burning of fuel. Alright, I think everything is perfectly clear to you. If yes, if combustion and flame, this chapter is, you know, something that you think you've understood, Quickly like this video and tell me in the comment section that yes ma'am, we've mastered this chapter in one go. The complete chapter. Let's see how many of you are confident. Har Samran is very confident. Kainam, Payal, Swati, Yashashvi. Quickly like this video guys and post a thumbs up over here. Great. Awesome, I see a lot of thumbs up, a lot of smileys, a lot of yes ma'am. Now, I have a homework question for you. And there is something I want to tell you. The answer you have to post in the comments section and the best answer will be pinned on the channel. So, all of you will reply and the best one will be pinned on the channel. It will also be highlighted on Telegram. I am really curious to know who is going to give the best answer. The question is, why is water not used to extinguish fire caused by electrical equipment or petrol? So, petrol, fire or fire by electrical equipment. In this case, in both these cases, we are not using water to extinguish. Why is that? What is the reason? Don't write the answer right now. I, I can see some of you writing it right now. See, if you will write the answer right now, it will be lost somewhere in the live chat. Right after the session, come back and post your answer. Yes? So, come back, post your answer and we will pick up the best one. We will pin, pin it on the channel and of course, we will also be highlighting it on Telegram. Great! Which of course brings us to the end of today's session and yes, we've got you covered guys. We'll keep coming up with amazing sessions for you people. Now, talking of upcoming session, I see a lot of you posting thumbs up that yes ma'am, we have mastered this chapter. So, if you really think you've mastered this chapter, we have a menti quiz coming up for you tomorrow that is 19th May at 6 p.m. So we have a Mendy quiz on combustion and flame tomorrow and tell your friends about it. Let's all be there and let's learn and master this chapter together. Let's practice and 
you know, be very confident about this one. I can see people are already excited for Menti quiz. Great. Awesome. And of course, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon. See, all your doubts, all your concerns will be solved with real life examples. You will be able to relate chemistry to your day to day life. So, you will organically understand all the concepts. So, yes, subscribe to our channel and hit this bell icon so that you do not miss any notification from our end. Yes, pile notes of the chapter will be shared. Menti quiz will be tomorrow, yes. Awesome. So, yes, chemistry is all around you. It's not just limited to your textbooks, your science textbook. It's very much all around you. All you need to do is know where to look and how to look. I keep telling you, keep observing chemistry, keep exploring the magic of chemistry. Take care guys, I will see you in the next session.